Ross Dellinger of Yahoo Sports surprised many last night when he had a report that said the Pac-12 is expected to expand by four to include Boise State, San Diego State, Fresno State, and Colorado State out of the Mountain West. The Pac-12 is dead. Long live the Pac-12. That was quick. Yeah. uh, This morning, the Pac-12 and member schools uh, acknowledged the fact that that report, in fact, true by Ross Dellinger, and the state schools will all be joining up together. This is probably the weirdest conference ever, when you think of it. They Mm. have six schools, all of them state schools. State schools. I don't know which ones that they can add on top of this. Are you going to go after Utah State, New Mexico State, Texas State? San Jose State. San Jose State. Ooh, all those suck. Huh? Sac, Sac State. Fears. Yeah. Nah, big go to the big sky. Montana <laughs> State. Hey, well, hey, let's not stop there. Right? That, let's Montana not State's stop probably there. the best of those teams. Let's go rope in Portland State. Pro- go ahead. Go get Portland State. No, uh, four schools added to the uh, Pac-12, and it's going to come at quite the expense. Each one of those schools has a $17 million uh, exit fee from the Mountain West Conference. In addition to that, according to Dellinger's reporting, there is, and we talked about this at the time, when the Pac-12 and Mountain West went into a scheduling agreement with one another, it was, hey, you poach any of our schools, you got to pay an additional 10 to $12 million. If you're doing the math on that, you're looking at between like 27 to $29 million for those schools to join up in the Pac-12. Which, when you start looking at the purse strings, pretty much exhausts what the Pac-12, which is Oregon State and Washington State, what they're going to get from the bowl payouts, from the NCAA basketball, uh, and from the the last payouts that were due to the Pac-12. It, it, it's, it is a desperation play. It's, but that is where the Pac-12 is at yes, right now. 100%. I think that it tells us a few things right now. It tells us what Oregon State and Washington State were feeling after conversations with the Big 12, the ACC, and a far lesser extent, the Big 10 and the SEC, and the feedback that they got uh, was not what they were looking for. They were looking for a a seat at the big boy table. Mm -hmm. We all knew that would be the case. The Pac-12 is in a precarious situation because, we, as we talked about over the summer, um, in the spring, the autonomous five status of the Pac-12 had been stripped away. So you are essentially creating a new group of five conference. Mm -hmm. And at this point, what we thought would happen at the, at the very beginning of this, and I was on this, this is what I thought the eventual outcome would be initially when the PAC 12 dissolved and we knew 10 teams were leaving is slowly, but surely the brand of the PAC 12 would start peeling off mountain West schools. And that's how the PAC 12 survives in name, in name alone. And th- I thought after all of the twists and turns that this thing took, it did look more and more like now the best course of action because of the 10 to $12 million that you're having to pay out when you peel schools out of the Mountain West due to their scheduling agreement. It looked like, well, maybe they're just going to join up with the Mountain West if they don't get into the Big 12 or the ACC. The, the interesting thing here is do they – with the pending lawsuit against the ACC and the possible dissolution of the ACC, do we see Stanford Cal joining this group? Well, I feel like that's probably the most likely outcome. I think the plan feels like what they're hoping for and expecting is that the ACC does blow up. Yeah. At that point, Stanford and Cal return to out west. They get released. They play in the Pac-12 yeah. because here's where they need to go from here. They need to get to eight teams. Mm-hmm. And you have to be eight at eight in order to be considered in a, a FBS conference. Mm-hmm. So right now they're sitting at six. The four that they did get are the four most valuable brands in the Mountain West on the surface. I might have looked at UNLV over Colorado State or I w- Fresno State. I would have taken UNLV or Air Force over Colorado State. But... That's not the way that this this no. worked out right now. So you're sitting at six. You're hoping that if you're expecting slash hoping that the ACC dissolves and Stanford and Cal do come back out west, then that gets you to eight. Yes. At that point, it, you go down the road of, all right, now do we peel off SMU, which we know that they want to be at the big boys table. They're paying their own way in so the ACC. So you, you don't have to really worry about them. And you're, you would be sweetening the pot for them. They're going to 
fight to get into the Big 12 mm-hmm. at all costs, but they've been turned away at every turn yep. of, of Big 12 and also, if, membership. If they, if they look at it, I think if, if they're smart, they look at that and they go, it's Boise State. Like that's that's really all you're competing with as far as the the outsiders, so to speak, as far as teams that have had cachet at the top for any consistent period of time in that group. Yeah, outside of Stanford, Cal, Oregon State, Washington State, which they get a leg up because of the history. Their well, their funding that they've had yeah. previously. They're ne- they're not playing catch up to anybody else. But my, but my point being, if, if you're going to join a conference, the like that to me makes the most sense for them. Simply because there's an opening there for them if they're going to put all this money into it, if they want to compete at the top. If you go to the Big 12, you're you're going to be, what? You're going to have to fight through Utah. You're going to have to fight through. Well, they're not worried about that because they just want the they want a seat at the, the table. Sure. That that's what they, ever since the Southwest Conference went away, they've wanted to get back to big time football. And they could be left without a home if the ACC blows up again and out a lot of money that their boosters have ponied up to make sure they survive in the ACC without television revenue. Remember, they joined the ACC by saying, we don't want any of your TV money yeah, we, we've for got the first, pools. I think, like five years yeah. and the, or three to five years or something. And then then you will start getting our shares of TV money. But if the ACC starts dissolving and you start seeing if Florida State and Clemson win their lawsuits, they get out, and then teams start jumping ship. The left tea leaves right. here seem to kind of predict that this lawsuit is going to is going to go on. Yeah, but uh, back to if you peel off SMU, you go and you get UNLV, then you're at a ten team conference at that point, and you it, it's more regionalized, mm-hmm, and it feels it feels a little bit better because you're not going to be able to peel but, off any of the Big Twelve teams. And then there's no reason for them God, to leave. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't want to leave no. at all. And but here's here's where the big one comes into play. Is all right. So if Clemson and Florida State get their way, they get out of the ACC. If the ACC survives, what what does the Pac-12 do then? Are you then looking at Memphis in Tulane? Yeah. But independent. Th- th- does that make? Does that make sense for them? No. If you're trying to get to eight, because if you join the Pac-12, yeah, sure, you're joining. Uh, you're joining a conference, but is it better than the American? Is the is, it's not going to get you autonomous five status. It's yeah. not going to get you an automatic bid to a playoff that conference with eight teams. Because you if you're get, adding you those get, two, you have to get to ten for the automatic, right? No, no, the, you have to be voted in. You have to be, get to eight in order just to be an FBS conference. It doesn't matter how many, I think once you're an FBS conference, then it comes into, all right, are we going to give you an automatic bid? The college football playoff committee then votes on that. That doesn't really make sense because, yeah, sure, you may be making a lateral move competitive-wise and maybe even a step backwards competitive-wise because of the fact that, if you run the table in the American, you're going to get in. Mm-hmm. And you may make your path a little bit harder. And then every other sport is very difficult to then compete in yeah. because your travel hey, going you, from you, Memphis you to four, Tulane. You got a four-hour trip back and forth. And so if the ACC survives, what does the Pac-12 do? And that's the thing. I, I think, if again, the, the tea leaves here seem to indicate that the ACC might be the one up for dissolution. And I almost wonder... As much as there's a quote unquote vigorous fight in the lawsuit that's pending here, I think ESPN wants it to dissolve. Even though they ha- they have the rights under control for that long, I think they're looking at that and going, the value of that product, the second those teams leave, is so so toxic that they want it to fall apart. Oof. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like in the yeah. sense of like if 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 Clemson, Florida State, they win and they're out. The ACC all of a sudden becomes incredibly devalued. Yeah, and and the money that they have, that's money tied up for another thirteen years. And do they want that? Yeah. And I just, with the restructuring and what has happened at ESPN, ABC, Disney, and how they have done things financially, I find it very hard to believe that they want to be in that business if that ends up happening. So that's why I, I wonder if. Look, every bit of restructuring we have seen that has been pre quote unquote preemptive, yeah, has been because they knew what was coming, and I just have a reeling suspicion that they know 
that behind the scenes that the ACC is going under. Boy, well, we'll see. And I, I went and I looked this up. The ACC, the SMU, they are getting a tiny bit of money from the ACC. It's not, it's not even close to being like 30%. There's a texture says 30, uh, 30% share. It's like peanuts yeah. that they're getting right they're, now. Their donors are covering basically everything. Yeah, they're getting like a five million dollar bump from the college football playoff, which is not and they a part got of the conference. Two hundred million dollars from their boosters. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a big, that's a big chunk of cash. Yeah, that, that oil money's real. But this is, here in lies the big issue for uh, Oregon State, Washington State, the fan base. Where do you guys feel right now with this move? Getting we need to pull this holding holding on to the survival of the Pac-12. It comes at the detriment of the Mountain West Conference, which Oregon State, Washington State, you've been in those shoes too. I mean, it's a far lesser degree because it's not you're not none of those schools are losing their Power Five status. But where are we feeling at with the move, the holding of the Pac-12 together in the future, both Oregon State and Washington State? 